Hello and welcome everyone. So today we are going to talk about history and scope of veterinary medicine. So for our better understanding we can divide the topic into main three parts. History of veterinary medicine in general, second history of Indian veterinary medicine and third scopes of veterinary medicine. So let us briefly go through the etymology or the origin of the word veterinary. The animal caretakers in ancient Rome were known as Sauve Taurinarai. From there came the word Veterinarai, which is the present form of the modern veterinary. Although some people believe that the Roman word for pack animal was Veterina, from which the word veterinary was believed to be evolved. Again, there is another group of people who believe that the scholar Columella, who was the great author on veterinary and agricultural topics, used the term veterinarius for sheep, pig and cattle doctors and mulumedius for horse doctors. Although the official version came when the Tarentinus, a Praetorian perfect of the kingdom of Commodius in Rome, formalized their military regulation and brought the term veterinary or veterinarii during 180-192 AD which is presently known as veterinary. So let's have a quick recap again from pack animal to sow veterinarii from there veterinarii and from there veterinary and from pack animal to veterina to veterinary and lastly veterinarius to veterinary. So, let us jump into the history of veterinary medicine, which is actually as vast as an ocean. Therefore, to make it more understandable, we can break it down into four main parts. First of all, early records of veterinary medicine, then comes the early recognition period, then early progress period and lastly the renaissance of veterinary medicine. So. What actually veterinary medicine is? Well, it is nothing but the art and science of diagnosis, treatment, prevention and control of diseases of animals and birds. Like many other arts and science, the origin of veterinary medicine appears to be lost in the midst of antiquity. Anyway, we can start it from 2000 BC when the general idea of animal doctor seems to have been described for the first time as a healer or azu of herds of ruminant animals during the Sumerian king Arning Arshu of Lagash. As we move down towards 1900 BC, we can see that the first written record of veterinary medicine from ancient Egypt was provided by Cahun Papyrus. The oldest veterinary publication is the part of Cahun Papyrus that describes number of animal diseases and a veterinary type approach to animal treatment. As we move down from the early records of veterinary medicine, we land in a period of early recognition of the veterinary medicine. It was nearly about 1760 BC when the king Hammurabi established the Babylonian Empire in the central part of Mesopotamia. The famous king Hammurabi was one of the most well-known kings of that period. There was a due recognition of the value of livestock and the necessity for development of veterinary medicine seems to have been clearly evidenced by the fact that in a code of laws enacted in Babylon. In simple words, there was system of laws to protect the animal rights in the town of Babylon. The famous Hammurabi Code provided a legal framework for the moral code that was enforceable and it was a great landmark in the emergence of protection 
of the rights of the individual. The code included rules for veterinary work and overall the medical focus of the code was on surgical interventions. The code 224 states that if a veterinary surgeon performed a major operation on either an ox or ass and cured it, the owner of the ox or ass shall give to the doctor one-sixth of a shekel of silver as his fee. And the code 225 says that if a veterinary surgeon performed a major operation on an ox or an ass and has caused its death, he shall give to the owner of the ox or ass one-fourth of its value. Although the first mention of rabies occurs in the Eshuana Code of 2300 BC, that is, before the Code of Hammurabi. It called for action as soon as rabies was noticed in a dog. The owner was informed at once and had to take preventive action against the bites. If a rabid dog bites someone who later died, a heavy fine was exacted on the owner of the dog and his family members. So that's how the people recognized the value of veterinary medicine. Now we'll try to understand the early progress period in the field of veterinary medicine. The early progress period was well demonstrated in the time of Moses. It was nearly about 1500 BC. The great learning of Moses included at least a working knowledge of physiology, parasitology, hygiene and sanitation. Then comes the period of Hippocrates. During 460 to 337 BC, well, Hippocrates, he described hydrothorax in oxen, sheep, and swine and mentioned the dislocation of hip joint in the cattle. And due to his tremendous contribution in the field of medicine, he is considered as the father of medicine. Then comes the period of Aristotle during 384 to 326 BC. Well, he discovered some of the diseases of swine, dogs, cattle, horses and asses and also elephants. In his descriptions of diseases of dogs, he gave an excellent description about the rabies. Then comes the period of General Xenophon during 349 to 259 BC who wrote a treatise on horse and horsemanship in which he emphasized the diseases and care of fit. Thus from this bit of ancient history it is seen that the veterinary medicine had its own beginning with the ancients and as we move forward in the timeline we appear in the period of Galen who wrote about the insistence of meat inspection. Then it was the time of Vegetius during 480. He was the author of four books on diseases of horses and cattle in which he urged disregard of divine discipline as the cause of disease and incantations as their cure. Vegetius is generally considered as the father of veterinary medicine. Now it is the time for renaissance in veterinary medicine. From the time of Galen through 12th century, there was a period of inactivity in all science and arts, otherwise known as the dark ages of science and arts. The church forbade the dissection and autopsies and destroyed much of the literature on the subject of veterinary medicine. During this time, no literature was written. The only work that was done by Arabs in Spain because of their love for horse and excellent horsemanship. In the 12th and 13th centuries, simultaneously with the renaissance of fine arts, there was a revival of interest in 
medical science. A nobleman by the name of Rufus in the 12th or 13th century wrote a book called De Medicina Equorum. The book contained great information about equine medicine. Rufus excelled in ability of his successors for nearly 400 years. The book that he wrote was actually a tabulation of original observations with no reference to the previous literature. He considered all superstitions, fables, astrological influences on disease as nonsense. Many terms coined by him are still existing today. About this time, the printing press was invented. Well, this was a great breakthrough in the field of publication works like literature, scientific researches, and other profound works. During this time, an Italian in 1598 by the name of Leoni Bologna wrote the first anatomy. About 200 years later, a Frenchman named as La Fosse published a second anatomy book which was a very good book. It was mainly about human and equine anatomy. Although the actual renaissance started in 18th century. In 18th century there were many outbreaks among the domestic animals of Europe. These outbreaks were mainly rinderpest, anthrax, blackleg, smallpox, scabies, glanders, strangles, and tetanus. The economic impacts of these outbreaks were enormous and brought to the public eye the need for a college of veterinary medicine. The first college was established in Lyon, France in 1762. It was in charge of Borgelot a young lawyer who had won extremely difficult case and received government aid to open the college. In the first batch, there were 38 students from different countries of Europe. There were Danes, Swedes, Austrians, Prussians, Sardinians, Swiss, and of course the French. The subjects taught were zootomy, especially the exterior of horse. Horsemanship, pharmacy, special pathology, surgery, and the principles of sanitation policies. After a few years, Louis XV made Lyons a royal school and established a second veterinary school at Alfort in 1765 and appointed Borgilet as the director of all veterinary education in France. The other veterinary colleges were also established in rapid succession. To name a few are Dresden 1776, Copenhagen 1777, Hanover 1777, Vienna 1777, Budapest 1786, Berlin 1790, Munich 1790 and Royal Veterinary College in London during 1791. In the United States of America, it was Dr. Benjamin Rush, who was a framed physician, established the worldwide base of veterinary education in 1806. He was the man who converted the art of veterinary medicine into a great profession. So this was all about the history of veterinary medicine in general and in the next videos we will talk about the history of veterinary medicine in India and the scopes of veterinary medicine as well. And if you like the video make sure to subscribe and share among your friends. Till then goodbye.